Ex-Cardinal McCarrick, scandalous. The charges were recently dropped by the judge overseeing the case. Cardinal McCarrick couldn't walk. Zero accountability. This is infiltration through the roof. He molested children. He embezzled money. And the judge has said that he is unfit, mentally unfit, to stand trial. And McCarrick, no penalties. No penalties in the church. Okay, yeah, they removed him from being a cardinal and defrocked him. But otherwise, no penalties. On the civil level, no penalties. Here is a man who served as the Archbishop of Washington, D.C., the most powerful Catholic priest, bishop, archbishop, cardinal in the United States, and zero consequences. I remind you that the United States Conference of Bishops several years ago voted not to proceed on more investigations. It was Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano who called him out, who made the whole thing public. And here we are, four years later, zero accountability. And I've been saying it for years. The only way to make change is to vote with your feet and to vote with your pocketbook. They completely got away with it. And now there's all of McCarrick's cronies who came up through the hierarchy, who were hand-picked. And now they are in pow places of power, positions of power in the church, both in Rome and in the United States. It's absolutely shameful. Here's what happened yesterday. I'm going to read you some of the news Charges against the ex-Cardinal McCarrick were dropped in a, a high-profile case in the Catholic Church, which included three counts of indecent battery and assault on a person age 16. You remember, several years ago, I interviewed James Grine, and he revealed on this podcast how he was molested in the context of confession and molested repeatedly over and over and over. In fact, those involved in the investigation actually watched that interview that I did with James Grine to get details and to further understand what was going on. We thought that we were moving the ball down the field. We thought we were making progress. We thought we were exposing the evil. And now McCarrick walks, judged unfit, to serve trial. James Grind made a statement. He said, now the court has come to the conclusion that Mr. McCarrick is not competent to stand trial. This conclusion is based on reports filed by two professionals, both of whom are psychiatrists and one who is a forensic spe specialist. I'm not aware of the length of the conversations between the experts and Mr. McCarrick to determine his competency, competency level but certainly they were brief compared to my experiences with him. I understand that one of the experts stated that McCarrick was intelligent and articulate. I have trouble reconciling the concept that someone who is intelligent and articulate is not competent to stand trial and to answer for his actions. I understand that being found competent to stand trial is not an acquittal, but he will not be found guilty and there seems nothing to keep him and his defense attorneys from declaring he was never convicted of the charges brought against him in Massachusetts. What's interesting about this horrific story is that McCarrick was linked tightly with the powers at B in DC. There's all kinds of pictures with him and the Clintons and the Bushes, and senators, and congressmen and women. He was embedded. I've told this story before. When I became a Catholic in 2006, as you know, I was an Episcopal priest, Episcopal clergyman before becoming a Catholic. I came to D.C. I had a job there working in D.C. 
And many people were encouraging me to go on and pursue the pastoral provision, which is the means by which married Episcopal priests can become Catholic priests with wives and children. I've discerned not to do that during that time, and obviously I didn't pursue to become a married Catholic priest. I'm a layman. But at that time, McCarrick was in D.C., and I was escorted. I was A meeting was set up for me to meet with McCarrick. And I met McCarrick. I knew nothing of these molestations or any of these horrible tragedies. But I met him. I remember he was very friendly, personable. He looked me in the eye. He started had a little Irish sprinkle in it, not a sprinkle, sparkle in his eye. And I remember thinking that he was kind, fatherly, careful. He told me that he would help me become a married priest. He was very encouraging of me to do that. Now I just want to wash my hands as much as I can, thinking I shook the man's hand. But I saw, looking back now, even I, who had never met McCarrick and didn't know anything, I was fooled. I thought he was a nice, friendly archbishop. But he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was a serpent. He was a snake. And that's how he got his way up. And there are many people we know from Vigano and others that knew how he had this beach house where he was taking Men, seminarians, young men, molesting them. And he gained power, and he gained money, and he gained influence, and he, in a way, handicapped the Catholic Church in America through his influence and through his sins. And it's absolutely shameful that nothing will happen to McCarrick. Not that you like this video, but to help the algorithm please go ahead and like it, share it. If you're new, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit the bell. I'm going to take a couple questions, a couple comments from y'all before signing off. There's really nothing more to say than this is a complete scandal. And it's amazing that the political powers, the church powers, have enabled a man to do so much evil. And, and by the way, not just molesting children and young men and seminarians, not just that, but creating a hurricane of scandal. It's led to people losing their faith, leaving the church, not coming on Sunday anymore. It's an enormous scandal with zero consequences. Jumping over to your comments and to your questions, we are streaming today on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, so I'll be looking at all of y'all right now and taking in some comments and your questions. Um, Anthony says, we can thank the communists for the filth that's in our beloved church. He's on Facebook. Yeah, that's exactly correct. And I document that in my book, Infiltration. Look at how communists actively placed men in the seminaries, both as professors and as future priests. It's documented. There are witnesses I go through that entire history, which goes back really 200 years in my best-selling book, Infiltration. If you haven't read it, get it. If you want a signed hardback, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. There's various levels there. I'll send it to you. Yes, McCarrick is a symptom of an infiltration of placement to undermine both the United States and the church. It's a documented fact. Thanks for your comment, Anthony. Bella Cruz brings the truth. She's watching on YouTube right now. Oh, don't worry. He will be held accountable. God promised it for everyone. That's exactly right. There may not be justice in this life, in the church, in her hierarchy, and in the canon laws, and all the slippery things they did. By the way, by laicizing McCarrick, they removed him from the canonical structure, which was weak, weak sauce on the part of Pope Francis and the Vatican. But there is a hell. There is a judgment. We should pray God wishes no man to be damned for his final conversion. But if he doesn't, there will definitely be the worst penalty possible. And we know our Lord Jesus Christ said it's better for a millstone to be tied around a man's neck and cast into the sea than to cause scandal to one of these little ones. And we know McCarrick has caused that scandal. 
Stephen, watching on Facebook, says, Everyone deserves a speedy trial. God will ensure he gets his. I pray for his conversion. Imagine if he spilled the beans on the cor corruption vegano style. Yeah, in order to redeem himself, he should spill the beans on everything that's going on in the Vatican and in the United States. But it seems like his cronies, his lawyers, his friends have paved the way for nothing to happen to him. Jude, you don't think the USCCB, United's Conference of Bishops, bribed the judges for you? I don't know. One thing that we have to think about is if he went to trial, there would be disclosure and all kinds of things could have spilled out into the public. So I think those who are part of the wasp nest of McCarrick, those bishops who made their ascent in the Catholic Church in the hierarchy, they definitely did not want McCarrick to go to trial because that could that could reveal all other clerics involved in sex trafficking. Two more comments and questions. Non-player character says, let he whose institution is without degenerate homosexual infiltrators cast the first stones. I don't really think this is a uh, competition over who has the nastiest, worst people in their institution. I mean, for crying out loud, we are the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We claim to be the one true church on God, on earth of God, the kingdom of God on earth. I'm not really interested in being a little bit better than any other institution or any other denomination, our standards should be the standards of the gospel. And that is preserving the innocence of the young and the old. Not using the clerical collar to be a mechanism for molestation and sexual abuse. It should never be the case. One more comment question. I wonder if he's connected to Epstein. I don't know of any connection. The St. Gallen Mafia installed Bergoglio, that is correct. Malachi Martin was not perfect, but he was correct all along. I agree, I agree, and I agree. Maria Anna says, It is true that he will be made accountable by God, but in the meantime, how many more abused people will he have access to? And the example that he has not been allowed to walk, that he has now been allowed to walk, gives other high powered. Catholics, or even just general priests, the power to molest human beings. I cannot wait for the warning to come and garb on down miracles. Please, Lord, stop the toxic evil in this world. Thank you for, thank you, thank you. I trust you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. What message does this send to other abusive priests and bishops? McCarrick got away. McCarrick got away. Today, they all took it, all these priests who have molested people, took a deep breath and say, ah, I too, if I have the right friends, can get out of this, not be held accountable. It's wrong. It's wicked. It's evil. Shame on McCarrick. Shame on all those who have been involved in the church and in the civil process all these years for completely dropping the ball. The scandal continues. And Christ says, woe to him by whom scandal comes. Let's pray the Our Father together. Oremus nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for all the victims of abuse, and we ask that you would bring them healing. May your son, Jesus Christ, be the Prince of Peace in their lives and bring peace from these horrible tragedies. May you continue to clean out your church from all this filth, remove the wolves in sheep's clothing, and let us dwell in your love, in your mercy, in your peace. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm sorry to bring this news to y'all today. Continue to pray that God's kingdom comes and his will is done. And let's pray that these infiltrators are thrown out of the church. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.